Hey guys, it's Protendo, and after months of silence about the port, Nintendo has finally started to give us new information about Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And the game looks absolutely amazing. The movement is quicker with some new moves, online play will allow us to throw friends off of levels from the comfort of our beds, and of course, we have the crown jewel that is Bowser's Fury, which is what inspired me to make this video. Because I believe that what we see in 3D World's new side mode might just give us a hint at what Nintendo is planning for Mario in the near future. But let's not waste any more time and get into what I mean. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, which, you know, you probably should, the trailer came out like two days ago, Bowser's Fury is a new mode in Super Mario 3D World on the Switch. The game has you transported to Lake Lapcat, where your goal is to collect the cat shines to brighten up the world with special lighthouses. However, the main attraction is of course the giant Fury Bowser who will attempt to stop you from completing your goals. By teaming up with Bowser Jr., you're tasked with clearing out the darkness of the world and finally going head to head with Bowser using the new Giga Bell power up. So synopsis aside, the reason why I think Bowser's Fury is so key to predicting the future of 3D Mario is because of the kind of mode it is. 3D World is a completely linear game. Your goal is simply to enter a level and reach the flagpole at the end of it. But I want to clarify that this isn't poor design in any sense of the word. Linearity has a pretty negative connotation when talking about 3D Mario, but I don't think that should be the case whatsoever. 3D World is an excellent example of why the linear bad mentality shouldn't be followed. It's about as linear as you can get, but it's still an incredibly refined and fun platforming experience. However, Bowser's Fury is going for a completely different angle. Instead of focusing on linearity like 3D World, we get a completely open world with Lake Labcat, where your goal is to find and collect various items instead of just touching a flagpole. And this is key, because it truly cements which direction Nintendo seems to be heading in with 3D Mario. 3D Mario games have always been split into two groups, the linear games and the open games. 64 and Sunshine were open, giving us large worlds to run around in and various collectibles to find within said worlds. But for a while, it seemed like Nintendo was going to drop the open world games completely. After Sunshine, we of course got the Galaxy games, which are both phenomenal, dare I say masterpiece level, but also linear. Following those, we got 3D Land and 3D World, which were even more linear than the previous two titles. Once again, linearity isn't necessarily a bad thing, but many were craving a return to form of sorts, a new open 3D Mario experience in contrast to the more platforming focused experiences that we had received over the course of a decade or so. And you all know how the story ends. We got the phenomenal Super Mario Odyssey, an entirely new open world 3D Mario experience which is now over 3 years old, crazily enough. As we all know, Odyssey was met with near universal praise and critical acclaim, many giving it the title of the best 3D Mario game yet, or even the best Mario game period. Because of that success, a sequel or at least DLC seemed like a no brainer. But surprisingly, we got nothing of the sort. We got a nice little update adding Luigi's Balloon World, which is tons of fun, but aside from that, nothing. No new kingdoms, no new moons, no characters, no additional story, and certainly no new game. And because of that, despite a sequel seeming so obvious, it once again left fans in the dark. Would Nintendo stick with Odyssey's open world format, or return to the linear nature of the galaxies and 3D world? Would we even see another game on the Switch, or will they wait for their next system for a 3D Mario? It seemed like a whole lot of questions with very few solid answers. But Bowser's Fury answers a lot of those questions, if indirectly. Because it shows us exactly what Nintendo is thinking and exactly what they want to do with 3D Mario. They could have easily added an additional world to 3D World, thrown in a handful of levels and called it a day. But instead, they chose to give us a completely open world in this linear game with lots of collectibles and different enemies and a giant angry Bowser on the rampage. This says more about their plans than most words could, and it's not just about the openness of Lake Lapcat, but everything else the mode entails. I mean, no offense when I say this, because once again, it's an excellent, refined platforming experience, but 3D World definitely isn't the most interesting Mario game, at least thematically. You've got what are pretty much levels synonymous with Mario at this point, grasslands, water, lava castle, etc. It throws in a couple wild cards, like this circus, but at the end of the day, it certainly isn't the most creatively ambitious 3D Mario game. But look at Bowser's Fury in comparison. You're stranded on this weird island surrounded by lighthouses you've got to visit. 
You can use Plessy to swim around freely to get to these places, and once you get there, you're faced with tons of different platforming challenges. You team up with Bowser Jr., of all people, to stop Bowser because he's been possessed or something and has turned into this ultra scary beast of a creature who wakes up every now and then to attack you, and your only hope of facing him is to unlock the giant power-up in the middle of the world and attacking him head-to-head -head as a giant Goku lion. That's so inventive, and it's really reminiscent of Odyssey to me, because that game had so many awesome moments like that. The Mario devs are clearly becoming more and more comfortable with offering more experimental adventures with crazy scenarios, instead of the more traditional run through the level to the flag situation. And I think the thing that says the most is that they chose to do this with 3D World of all games. Like, if this was some sort of Mario Odyssey DLC, it would still be awesome, but it wouldn't really tell us anything about how hard Nintendo was planning to push open 3D Mario. But the fact that they took the second most linear game in the entire series and chose to add a completely open side mode to it speaks volumes. Because no one would have bat an eye at the inclusion of additional linear levels, yet Nintendo themselves chose to make it open. And not just open, open and really weird and cool. So, I think it's pretty clear what's next for 3D Mario. More open-natured worlds, more wacky concepts we'd never expect from the series, and even more surprises. And, to me, that really sounds like Super Mario Odyssey 2. But the point of this video wasn't really to pinpoint a specific title that Nintendo has coming up, and rather to look at the direction the series is heading into, even past the next game. But, yeah, it's totally gonna be Odyssey 2. I mean, the game has no DLC, it's pretty much inevitable. But anyways guys, that's about it for this video. What do you think? Is 3D Mario heading in a more open direction, or could Nintendo surprise us by returning to the linear nature of 3D World and other games? And what do you think about Bowser's Fury? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you later. Protendo, out.